Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and what I'm gonna do in this video today is go over my studio. So I have about an 11 by nine foot room here. It's like my third bedroom, I guess, in my house here, but it's a fairly small room, and I'm gonna go over all the different stuff that I'm using. So for starters, I got cameras, I got lights, and I got audio. So I'm gonna go over all three of those aspects and break them down. I'm really hoping that this video will help those that are new to building a studio or somebody that might wanna upgrade your studio to get better audio, video, whatever the case may be. I, I'm hoping that this will help speed that process up, that learning curve that's involved when it comes to you know, upgrading studio equipment. There's so much different equipment you could buy, so many different solutions to various problems. So I really hope you guys come along for the ride. And just so you know, below the video in the description area, if you click that show more button, you will see all the different links for all the stuff that I'm talking about in this video. All right, so let's get right into it and we're gonna start with cameras. Here's my Sony a7C in front of me. And as you can see, I have the awesome small rig camera cage on the camera so I can just easily mount it right to the tripod without using any kind of adapter plate which is awesome because it has the Arca Swiss like plate built into the bottom of it so it just makes it super easy to mount to different stuff. I also have this ND filter on the front. I'm not sure how to pronounce it but it's N-I-S-I -I, and I just got this. One of my friends recommended it and said that it has really good color cast control. So that's what I'm using on the front of my Sony 35 millimeter f 1.8 lens. I'm also using a step up filter. So I have the front of the lens is a 55 millimeter filter thread. The filter that I bought is a 67 millimeter filter. I bought the larger filter because I want this filter to be able to fit on all of my lenses. So to be able to use this on the smaller 55 millimeter filter thread, Sony lens, I just have a step up ring attached. So this is what the step up ring looks like, or step down ring, whatever you want to call it. And it just screws to the lens filter, like so. And then now I can screw that onto the 55 millimeter filter thread. One thing I like about this filter is how it has this nice easy lever here to turn it. I really like that. The purpose of this ND filter is to slow the shutter speed down because when you're recording video, you want the shutter speed to be double what your frame rate is. This is looking at it from the side, so you can see what it looks like. This is what the studio looks like. So for starters, I'm using this card here. It's a UHS-2 card, and the read and write speeds are really fast compared to the UHS-1 cards. So that's what I'm using in my Sony a7C. Just gonna put it in the side there, like so. So now, looking at the back of the camera, I have the display mode here. If you hit this display button, you can just cycle through the different screens. And if I scroll to this screen, you can pretty much see all the settings I have set. So if we're looking at the top of the camera, you could see I have it in video mode. Well, let me just go around it quick and then I'll show you how I have all the settings set. So I'm in manual exposure mode. I have the camera set to 4K at 24P at 100 megabits. You could see it right there. I have, that's the battery power. Metering mode, I have set to average metering mode. I have the color temperature set to 6000K. That's a custom white balance. And the rest of this stuff is default there. Right now the ISO is at 640 because I was going around the camera, but what that should be at is 500. I'll show you that in a minute. F1.8 is the aperture I use. 1 50th of a second is the shutter speed I use. I have facial recognition turned off, so when I hold products up in front of the camera, it switches quickly. I don't have to worry about it locking on my face. I'm using Picture Profile 7, which is S-Log2, and I'm using the Zone Focus Mode. So let me show you how to change some of these settings. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go into the menu and show you where you can set the video settings. So if I scroll over to Tab 2 here, and then scroll down, this is where you can change your video settings. So if you click on that, I have mine set to 4K, as you can see there. And if you scroll down, these are more settings, and I have it set to 24P at 100 megabits per second. So that's how I have the video set. Now, let me go to the ISO here by pressing the side button here. That'll bring into the ISO. That I want at 500 because I use the studio lights to dial in my exposure. I want the camera set to the base ISO of 500 here which is the lowest it can go when using S-Log2. So the focus mode, if you hit the function button here and you go up over to the focus area, sorry, not focus mode, focus area, you go there and I have zone selected. As you can see here, it's the second one down. 
and then you could move the zone around. I have it in the center area. And that works great for almost everything I do. I usually have it set that way. Now, if I hit the function menu again, if you go over here to the right, you can see I have the function menu custom programmed. If you go to my beginner's guide on the Sony a7C, I show you how to do that if you guys wanna go into that. But this tutorial, I'm not gonna explain how to customize the camera. I have the autofocus transition speed set to four, and all these options are in the menu. And I have autofocus subject shift sensitivity set to four as well. But if you scroll down here to the right, the exposure mode, if you click on that, I have it set to manual. And so I'm in manual exposure mode, even though, like you saw a minute ago on the top of the dial, I'm still in video mode. So it's not like straight up manual mode, like you might think for photography. All right, so let me go back into the menu and let me show you a couple other settings here that are important. Now, if you go to the right here, this is where the AF transition speed and stuff is in, in case it's not in your function menu, because I have mine custom configured, but that's where those two settings are there. Now, if we go back in tab one, this is where the picture profile is right here. So if you click on the picture profile, I have it set to PP7. Now notice that little arrow there. I can go to the right and now I can configure the actual PP7 to whatever I want. So if you go to gamma, for example, you can go in here and change it to whatever setting you want. You don't have to leave it on S-Log2, but just so you're aware, I'm leaving it on S-Log2. And if you scroll down, I have the color mode set to sgamut3.cine and I have my saturation at plus 20. The saturation was at zero by default, and it was just too hard to grade, I found, when I was in Final Cut, trying to get the colors to look right. So when I added more saturation, it made it so much easier to do that. So I guess it's because the camera's only 8-bit as opposed to 10-bit. 10-bit, you would have more leeway when it comes to that sort of thing. All right, so because I'm using S-Log, if you go into the menu here and scroll over to the right, I have zebra settings enabled. If you go into the zebra settings, this is super helpful for exposing. Um, I have it set to on and I have it set to 70. And that's great for skin tones. And I find that when using log, when I'm looking at the screen, like I showed you a minute ago, you can see the zebra settings, they kind of light up across the exposures. When I just start to see it on my cheek, I back it off just that little bit. And that's how I know I have my skin tones just right. And this is a great tool for that purpose, especially when using log footage, because it's a little harder to tell when you're using log footage, because the screen looks fairly flat. So this is the other option that you're gonna need to enable if you wanna use S-Log and have it kind of look sort of reasonable on the screen. You can do this gamma display assist, and I have it set to S-Log 2 right here, just like that. And that helps make, when you're looking at the screen display, when like you saw a second ago, it makes it look much more like a regular screen display, so it's not so flat looking. I definitely recommend having that enabled as well. So those are pretty much all the settings I have set on here. And uh, the, the only other setting I could turn off is the active stabilization setting because I'm using a tripod, but the camera pretty much knows not to use stabilization if it's on a tripod, so I usually just leave it on because a lot of times I forget to turn it on when I actually do need it. Those are all the settings for the Sony a7C here that I have set. If you guys have any questions about any of these settings, please just let me know. I don't think I missed anything, but that's pretty much how I have the camera set. Now, this is also a Manfrotto arm, but it's not the magic arm. It's not quite as sturdy and easy to use as this one. It has multiple adjustment knobs on this guy, but it's super versatile and you can adjust it any way you want. So it does the job perfectly. Now, all these cables, this is kind of messy uh, looking, but it's, it's really practical because what I got here, sometimes I put the A7C up here for an overhead or I use the A6400. So I have multiple cables, but I have a battery blank here for the A6400. So I can just plug this in and I don't have to worry about batteries dying. So that's fantastic. I also have this cable here. This is a USB-C cable. So if I'm using my Sony A7C and I wanna live stream or I just wanna have it hooked up to an external monitor or if I wanna charge it. So you can, I can use this cable for all those things uh, depending on what I wanna do. Now, this cable here is a micro HDMI cable. I have this cable hooked up to that TV. So I can use that TV and see what I'm doing when I have overhead footage. So it's, it's awesome. I love that when I can just look up and see exactly what I'm seeing, because it's really hard to see the camera screen when I have it mounted to this rig. Let me show you what it looks like. 
So pretty much I take the A6400 and again, because I have this fantastic small rig camera cage on it, I could mount it super easy. So watch this. All I got to do is bring it up here and I can just mount it however I want. There's so many holes to choose from. So I'll just mount it right there like that. And now I have an overhead rig. And like I said, these cables just plug right into the side. So this is what it looks like with both the cables plugged in. I got the micro HDMI and I have the micro USB plugged into the side of the A6400. That's how I have this set up. And this has made my workflow so much faster and so much easier just because I can leave this set up most of the time. And then I can just loosen this clamp here and turn it out of the way when not in use. So when I stand up, I don't smash my head on it when I get up. By the way, guys, I highly recommend using a zoom lens of some sort if you're using a setup like this, just because it's super easy to zoom in and out like this as you're filming. So you could do it like while you're talking, you could be like, check this out and zoom in and zoom out. Very convenient. You could also zoom in by cropping and post-processing as well. Don't get me wrong. And uh, if I do want an extremely narrow depth of field for some purpose, I would put a different lens on, like the Sigma 30 millimeter f1.4 lens, for example, if I really wanted to have depth of field play. But in most cases, I'm doing overhead tutorials on a camera and this lens is great, so I don't really mind the slower aperture. So here's what it looks like when I actually have it set up. So you can see how now if I just move, you know, you could see exactly what I'm filming super simply and also when I have it up on the TV like this now I can just make sure everything's like perfectly level you know I might have to adjust this a little bit here and there I can set my zoom and so forth so it's just super easy when using a monitor like that and I got that TV it was really cheap it was like a hundred bucks at Walmart and I'm just using it for that like the colors aren't that accurate and things like that but it doesn't really matter because I just need a visual indication of what I'm doing so just to show you a little closer, you can go to Home Depot and buy all this stuff. It's, it's in like the plumbing area and it's just threaded pipe. They make black pipe and they also make galvanized pipe. And this is just fantastic for this type of stuff in my opinion because it's super strong, it's super industrial and it's fairly affordable and you can build whatever you want like Legos. So, so I got this bottom plate here. I just pre-drilled the holes and I screwed it to this wood shelf. This wood shelf is also mounted using black pipe as you can see here and I have it going into the wall. Let me just show you how I did that. So you can see under here I did the exact same thing with the shelf. I used that plate and I got you know I screwed into a stud of course and then I have a clamp clamping it to that black pipe. So that's what I used for my shelves and there's another one over there. But again so then I have a 12 inch vertical pipe and that's what I'm using to clamp these super clamps to. So the super clamps are they clamp really good to round stuff. So I have one here and then the one above for the other clamp. So it's just, it's a great solution and I'm very happy with how it works. It's very easy to use and it's easy to get the stuff out of the way. So it just makes sense for somebody like me. All right, so for lighting, I am using the Godox SL2. It's an LED daylight balanced video light. And I just wanted to show you the rig that I have set up. Remember that black pipe I was showing you a minute ago? Check this out. So I got the mount on top of this big heavy duty shelf that I built and I just have black pipe coming out down and around and that allows me to move everything all over the place. As you can see here, I can turn this like that so I can get the light further away. I can use the light towards the camera to light up my lab scene. I can have it set basically like this and that'll behind the camera is where I have the lab scene behind that door. And this just works so good. It's so simple and it's very affordable. Now, of course, they make professional versions of this, but I don't know. I just like building stuff myself, and it works really well. Now, this is just a 36-inch collapsible uh, softbox, and I have the grid in the front of it. That grid, what that grid does, if you're not aware, is it makes sure that the light goes straight in, like, one direction, and so it doesn't diffuse out. That's what the grid does. If I didn't have the grid, the background would also be lit up by some of the softbox light, but that grid keeps the light nice and straight. So the Godox light also comes with this remote, so it's very easy to just dial in the light power. You know, while I'm sitting in front of the camera, I don't have to get up and dial in the light. All I have to do is hit up and down on this, and there it is. And I can also see the color temperature, and I can change that on the remote as well. And the light was an investment. You know, it is kind of expensive compared to the cheaper lights, but it's so much better. It was totally worth the upgrade.
All right, so let me talk to you about these two background lights. I have the one light that's really bright right now. That's the one that lights up the side of my face that you can see in the talking head footage. And then the other light I have set to orange basically right now, and that's just lighting up the background. So let me show you how those are set. So here is the light that I was using for the lighting up the side of my face, and it's the newer 660 LED light, and it works great. I have it actually only at 10% power, and I have the color temperature set to 5000, which is matching the Godox light that you can see in the background now. So for this light, I'm using the GVM 850D, and this is a cool light because you, it does RGB as well. So I have it in hue mode right now. If you press this button, you can change the mode. That's regular mode, like I'm using the other light for to light my face up. But in this case, I'm using it as color. So I have it set to hue, and then you can dial in whatever color you want, as you can see. And I have it at 100%, and if you hit the mode button again, you could set your saturation, which I also have at 100. So that's what I'm using this light for at this time. And it works great. All right, so over here, guys, you can see right here, this is my Arisa light. I reviewed this a while back, and this is just a nice portable light. It's got super strong magnets, so you can stick it to stuff in the field, which is awesome. And it's got a power button here. It's like water resistant. And what I do with this light, I pretty much just put it right here like this, and it lights up my lens shelf, and it also puts a little bit of that blue on the background. So that's what I use this light for, and it's battery powered. So I also have that USB-C cable over here. And what I do is I plug this one end into the light, one end into my laptop, and that will charge the light while I'm using it. So I do that as well sometimes. Lastly, over here, you can see that other little light I have, this guy. And I have this one's battery powered. Uh, it's another GVM light, and I just have a battery pack on here. It takes the F550 style unit, and I have this light set to color as well. I'm not sure how good you can see that, but HSI mode is the color, and I have this one set to blue. So I have this set right about like that, and that helps light up the wall over there, and it lights up the background as well a little bit. So when you look at me, when I'm doing the talking head stuff, this that background's all out of focus, and the lights kind of look cool. It makes an interesting background, I think. The other light I wanted to show you was my GVM round desk light, and now that light mounts right to the desk. It's great when I'm using the overhead rig to light up whatever I have on the desk. And I actually reviewed this light as well, and I have it set to about 50% power, and I also have it set to 5,000 for the white balance. So I don't have that light on my desk all the time. I only put it on there when I'm doing overhead stuff when I need the light. When I'm recording in the field, guys, I use this Zoom F1 field recorder, and it comes with a lav mic, a lavier mic. You could see here, and this is the lav mic. You can just pin it right to your shirt with this little clamp. All right, so for my professional mic, I'm using the MKE 600, and I have it set on a boom stand here. I'll show you the rest of that boom in a second, but what I wanted to show you first was the mic itself. So this type of mic requires XLR cables, and XLR cables are great cables. They're balanced audio cables, and they have a lot of shielding built in, so you don't have to worry about picking up hum and things like that when you're on movie sets. You can see on the bottom, there's a couple of switches. I have the battery turned off and I have the curve set to flat there. And the XLR cable just plugs into the end of the mic like so, and it actually has a click to it. It like locks in place. And it came with this little mount here as well. So it just mounts there pretty sweet. And then it also comes with this wind diffuser. So I put that on there. And what's so convenient is I can just turn this really easily with this boom stand to change how the mic is positioned so this kit, this boom kit, came with the light stand and this thing here. And this is like a multi-adapter unit. I don't even know what you call this, but it has all sorts of holes in it. So you can clamp it to a variety of size of pipes because this pipe is a different size than the pipe here, for example. And if you loosen it, you can adjust where the light is. So you can raise it up and down. You can slide in and out like so. And this is just super versatile. So if I want to use this in front of my computer, for example, I can swing it like this and then have it aimed over there. Something like that. So when it's in front of when I'm in front of the computer, I have the mic right where I need it. And when I'm talking in front of the camera, um, I have the mic up much higher above my head so you can't see it. But that's how that works. So down here, 
I have a Zoom H5, and this is a, it's called a handy recorder, um, and it's awesome. It's, it's really powerful. I love this thing, and it has XLR inputs, which is why I had to get it. So this cable here plugs into the recorder, and the other end of this cable you saw already plugs into the mic. So it actually is keyed, so you just have to turn it the right way, and it'll plug right in. And then all you have to do, I'm plugged in input one, so I just have input one selected right there. You could turn it on and off. When I have input one selected, you can now see, test, test, one, two, test, one, two. You can see the audio meters going, and that's how you do it. And when recording, by the way, um, I like to dial it so it's right around, let's see, the audio meter's pretty good. That's usually how I have it set. So this thing takes batteries also, but I have it plugged in right now, so I don't have to worry about changing batteries and stuff. SD card slides right into the side of the unit, and I actually have it mounted with a clamp here. You can see it's got a little ball head, and then I got this clamp here. So what's cool about the clamp is I can just clamp it right to the desk, like so. Or if I want to move this thing, I can clamp it right to the light stand and then just carry it all together. It's just another view of this weird clamp contraption thing. And I'm actually using two XLR cables. I have a short one that has a 90 degree on it. And then it connects right there to a longer cable, which goes into my Zoom H5 recorder, as you can see right there. All right, so now I'm just going to go over my rig for live streaming and how I have it set up. So I prefer to use the Sony 20mm f1.8 G lens for the live streaming because it's a little bit of a wider view and um, it's easier for me to show things to people when I'm, you know, demonstrating in front of the camera, for example. All right, so let me show you how I have the camera set. So I'm, I'm in video mode here and let me just turn this beast on. All right, so looking at the back of the camera here, you can see how I have the camera set. I'm just going to go over the settings really quick here. So I have that I have it set pretty much the same way that I had it set for when I'm filming in front of the camera, except I'm not using S-Log. You can see right here I have the picture profile turned off. I have fa facial recognition turned on in this case because usually I'm doing webcam stuff and I do want it to focus on my eyes. Um, if I'm holding stuff up in front of the camera, then I just have to cover my face or I can turn that feature off but I do have it on in general for live streaming. I have the camera in manual mode. So ISO is set to 100 in this case because I'm not using S-Log, so I'm able to go all the way down to 100. And white balance is set to 5,000. And that's pretty much how I have the camera set. So if I press the function menu here, you can go in and change some of these settings if you need to. All right, so here is the new USB streaming feature. And on the A7C, once you update the firmware, it'll appear on this page, so Movie 4. And to en enable it, you just hit the center button here, and it'll put the camera in USB streaming standby. And once you plug in the USB cable, the camera will become a webcam at that point. So let me just cancel this really quick, and I wanna show you in the menu here, if you go up to the top, go into the suitcase or toolbox, whatever you want to call it, and you go to version here. Now in version, this will show you what your camera is set to. Notice how mine's at version two because I updated the firmware. So the other thing I need to do is hook up the microphone really quick. So I'm, I like to use my video micro just to make it nice and easy. So I just plug that in over here on the side of the camera like so. And then this has the nice shoe mount right there, the cold shoe mount. So I just slide this right into the cold shoe mount on the top of the small rig, like that. All right, so here's the Manfrotto super clamp and magic arm kit here. And what I do is I just loosen this knob. And this is what makes the Manfrotto so awesome. It's just this one knob and everything tightens automatically. That other Manfrotto that I'm using up above for my overhead rig, each, each component has its own knob. So this is a little bit easier to use. You could just dial it right where you need it, somewhere right about there, and then you can crank that knob down real tight, and it's super sturdy. Again, because I'm using this small rig, all I gotta do is screw it right on to the clamp. All right, so now on the side of the camera, I just need to hook up the cable. So I have the USB cable I'm gonna hook up and the micro HDMI cable. Now it's the USB-C cable here. It's gonna go into the bottom, so it'll just charge the camera if I have it plugged into my computer. I could also use it to transfer data, but you also have to have this hooked up for the streaming purpose. Now, let me put in the HDMI cable here. 
like so. All I have to do now is set the camera, turn the camera on, and enable the USB streaming. So I'm just gonna swivel the screen out quick. All right, so now I gotta go into the menu here. You can see right there I have a USB streaming in my favorites area, but it's actually located in Movie 4. Movie 4, USB streaming. And that will put the camera in standby USB streaming mode. And you can see that up on the TV as well. Check this out. So now it's in USB streaming mode. It's just waiting to be plugged into the computer pretty much. So here is the other end of that USB-C cable. And by the way, this cable, all this stuff is linked below. I have this cable linked below as well. So it's a pretty long cable, which is perfect for the web camera. So I have, you know, I could move it around if I need to. So I just got to plug this into my laptop. All right, let me just fine tune this a little bit now that I'm sitting in front of the camera right about there. Perfect. That looks good. And I can see the audio meter on the TV. Audio is good. All right, so now that I have the camera set up for live streaming, check this out. If I go to something like FaceTime, for example, check it out. I'm using the Sony a7C for the camera. Now it looks amazing. So what I can do is I can just drag the window onto my other screen so it's right underneath the camera. So if I'm talking to somebody, you know, using FaceTime, it's like right behind where the camera is. So it kind of looks like I'm looking at them. I gotta move it a little, you know what I'm saying? So I really like this setup. Um, that's why I have it like this. I can look up and see me at the camera above, or I could look down here and you'll see a little version of me, but more importantly, it looks like I'm looking at the person I'm talking to. Also guys, note how I have the boom here. See how I have the boom right in front of the camera there? If I'm doing screen capture work, I can have the mic right there and I can record and get the really good quality audio. And let me show you how I have it set up when I'm in front of the camera. I just go like this. I put my foot on top of the light stand so it doesn't lift up on me. Zoom that and I can collapse this right about here. And now when I'm sitting and talking in front of the camera, the camera is like right about here normally. Uh, and the mic is out of view and that's how I use it in this situation. All right, guys, so what do you think of my studio? I would love to hear your thoughts. I mean, if you see something like, you know, Jay, why are you doing it that way? You should be doing this or that. Like, please let me know. You know, I'd love to hear suggestions. I'm always looking to improve. And, you know, I love trying different things. So let me know in the comments below. So with so many ways to set up a studio, it's like really hard to figure out where to start, you know? So in my opinion, your best bet is to really do a lot of research, like by watching videos like this. There's so many other videos of people doing stuff like this video. And then coming up with a plan coming up with a budget and you know figuring out what you can do what you can afford now if you can afford to just buy everything outright which I mean who really can these days you just got to piecemeal it you know buy one thing at a time and work your way that's what I've done so I bought cheap lights at first they work I used those eventually I was able to get a better light and then I now recently have gotten a, a more professional light let's say but that whole process took me about 10 years I've been doing this 10 years so it, it's just it's different for everybody you know you might already have gear whatever the case may be okay guys so early next week I'm gonna do a live stream now what I'm gonna do in that live stream is address all your questions in regards to this video and if you guys have questions I would really appreciate it if you could ask below the video in the comments area just ask all the questions you have and then early next week I'm gonna do a live stream like I said and I will then have all those questions ready to answer and then also any other questions you might have during the live stream we'll do a Q&A during that as well but this way the questions below it'll give me a little time to do some research if I have to to answer those questions sometimes I have to look stuff up you know what I mean it depends on the question all right guys so I will share the live stream link in the community area on the YouTube channel I'll also send it out on social media in addition to that guys I have a killer giveaway for the live stream that you're not going to want to miss out on and last live stream had about 30 to 40 people so I don't don't think there's going to be that many people in there so your chances of winning are really high all right guys so that is it for this video i really appreciate you checking it out please do me a favor give me a thumbs up if you thought you got something out of this video and be sure to subscribe if you want to see videos like this in the future all right guys so i will catch up with you early next week in that live stream and we'll go from there have a good one take care